Gary, you want to start? I could start. I think I go back. I think I'm the oldest. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Listen, I go back uh, almost as long as Sue. I think Sue is probably the oldest. Um, but I definitely, I started with Ipsby in around 1986 when I brought my um, teaching to L.A. And I, I met Hamsa and talked about bringing polarity and cranial to Ipsby. And at that time, you know, Ipsu was just the most flavorful environment. It was so, felt like great, you know, just like a great place. Like I arrived somewhere where people understood who I was and what I was doing and wanted to, you know, and, and, and welcomed the work, the polarity and the cranial work. And, and I went to, when I came to LA, I actually went to a lot of different schools and met with the owners and, and clearly Ipsby was the place. There wasn't even a question. That's the, my beginning. Uh, and sit, and then what happened was we made a little bit of a, I brought my school, became my school. At first it was just classes. It was a little program, like three classes. And then eventually became a program. And I've been with Ipsby ever since. I've never, I've taught there every year and developed and brought teachers and the whole thing. And eventually, obviously we became like a sister school and uh, had that kind of relationship. And through all the twists and turns or ups and downs or ins and outs, I've been in the conversation or at the center of the inquiry and the dialogue around the evolution of Ipsby. And I feel rich for that in my life. So my history with Ipsby started in 1988. I never left. Uh, I've been part of this evolution of Ipsby since 1988 as a student. I've learned so many different modalities of the healing arts through Ipsby that I never would have probably if I went to some other school. Um, Ipsby is the, her own spirit and the people that come to our school are looking for something and they might not even know exactly what it is, but there's a depth in, in their, their being that, that's curious and hungry and wants to be of service and also wants to learn and grow as a, as a human. And, and so I'm really excited where Ipsby is evolving too. We, we've been part of Ipsby for so long and this next iteration really exciting and it just feels so right and it feels like we're honoring the spirit of Ipsby as we do this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Why don't you talk about your history? So at 23, I moved across the country. I started in our the beginning foundational school at Ipsby San Diego in 1995. And then in 1995, I didn't even realize Ipsby LA existed. And I moved up to there because it was a lot closer to where I was. So and you were living in LA. Yeah, so driving to living, San Diego. <laughs> I was living in LA and driving to San Diego. And uh, I basically fell in love with it. I completed my, uh, my training within about a year and a half, really early. I was working in the office as admin and was training to teach at the same time. So about 1998, I started teaching um, the foundations class. And I can't even explain how, just reiterating, Tracy, what you're saying, the people that come in. Hamsa once asked me in a group uh, that, how do you know you won't get bored? I said, I might be teaching the same material class per class, but it's the people that change. It's the people that inspire. 
it's the people that let us help us grow you know and it's it, i feel like i grow more and more being related to so many different people students that come in i mean the people that are drawn to ipsb are amazing uh, i just i love what we do i find it powerful enriching i've been teaching for 28 years and i can't believe it's been that long uh this is my heart my soul i always said that isp isn't a vocation it's a lifestyle and that's the lifestyle i live by now thank you so i joined the ipsb family in 2003 and i have i started teaching in 2007 actually tracy Tracy trained me to teach my first class, Teaching Raindrop, in 2007. Long, it feels like a long time ago at this point. I'm hitting my 20th year this year in the Ipsy family. And the thing that I have to, I have to reiterate, it's like I did the same thing Tracy did. I'm like, I, I came in and I was like, I'm never leaving. <laughs> because I, I love not just what we do and not just the community. I love every aspect of what, what, this, what this is and what this means. And God, the people are amazing. Like I've never been in an environment where I met so many extraordinary humans, consistently extraordinary humans. And it's continuously inspiring to me to see what they show up with and what they bring. And it's, it's why I've stuck around for so long and why I'm excited about being a part of the evolution. I have been in a dialogue with Hamsa, uh, and then with Lisa for probably 15 years about becoming part of Ipsby or partnering with each of them or creating a new entity to have it go to another level. And I think at every age of Ipsby, there's been, and Hamsa did this in her time, it kept evolving. And she got to a place where she was done with her stewardship and Lisa, then the same way Barry, in his work with Hamsa and Ipsby, handed it over. And so then when Lisa was at the end of her stewardship, we had been in dialogue with her for years already about this kind of thing. And it was around the time where the state CMTC, CamTech, was starting to come into reality. And we were very ambitious about having a program. And so for us, it was kind of natural to become the next steward of Ipsby. And that was 2016. And I said this to you, but I have to say it again. When we were in that dialogue with Lisa, which went on for a while, we, I was personally, the two of us actually, were thinking about you guys. That we thought that Ipsby was you. We were in that conversation and we were like, yeah, that's a, cause we were exploring the possibilities of what would happen. And then we, you know, did our stewardship thing and entered into and, and doubled our space. And we were doing all this stuff, getting like trying to, you know, build. And, um, and then right after we doubled our space, obviously, uh, COVID happened and closed down our space, which was fascinating because <laughs> here we were going, yeah, let's, we got it. And we were building a community. It was very robust and trying to, and each time trying to get to, a, you know, the next iteration. And so I have to say that through COVID was very challenging. And we had staff and teachers leaving and, you know, a lot of, a lot of people were very challenged. It was challenging for us to stay open. We never closed, really. We stayed open the entire time. And I have to say, without you, Sabrina, we would not have survived the pandemic. We would have closed. There's no doubt without you. And when you came on, for me, that was like, that was part of this journey of the next, which we didn't know what that was going to look like, or even if we would be open at the end of the pandemic or out at the end of those years, even till recently, I think, we wondered about how viable we could be. 
However, you became instrumental in Ipsby now, I think going through, maybe going through a little bit of a death and a rebirth through the pandemic, like everybody, all businesses, so many businesses didn't make it, let alone massage schools or let alone the kind of thing that we do, which is not, you know, like you were saying earlier, I, Ipsby has always been a spiritual entity for me. And I feel like it was something that we served. And, and it wasn't about a physical location. It wasn't about, it was about that we were an environment and a community. And, you know, during the pandemic, I think when we were listening to that, we were like, well, what we have is so much the answer to our world. We, I live that. I live that what we do balances out the world around us. It's exciting for me to imagine the next evolution and for us to evolve and change for today and, you know, and let go and go, okay, today. And today for LEI and Ipsby is to evolve to another way of being related. Yeah. That, that's what it feels like to me. I'm excited about that and the resource and the power and certainly your stewardship. You know, I, I was thinking the other day about our conversation when you asked me to come on and work as director in 2020. And, you know, that was such an insane moment in our world. Just, you know, how are we going to do something that is a touch-based modality and still when we can't touch each other? It's such a weird concept. <laughs> like, how are we going to, how are we going to survive this? This is what we do. We touch each other, but we can't do that. Like, was such a weird thought to, to try and figure out how to meet the moment, you know, as a, as a creative group and, and still serve our community, knowing that we know so profoundly that touch is vital for survival and for mental health and all of those things. And I think that to some extent, that's why part of why we survive, because we're not just talking about, you know, a, a job, we're talking about a, a mental health tool we're talking about a way of connection and being being with people that is more profound and i think that that's just incredible in this evolution of ipsby and connecting here with sabrina and cindy and gary like i'm in the middle of this um these very strong threads of ipsby soul and where it's going next in the can I say it? Yeah. Do I, do I get to say it? So as we hand the reins over to right. Cindy and Sabrina. Wow. What a what a journey we've been on. It's going to take a lot of this to fully uh, grasp these changes. And it's so exciting to be in, in this it's journey. It's a journey. And it's going to begin again. It keeps beginning again. That's the thing about Ipsy. She just keeps like, okay, next. Okay, next. <laughs> and like, this is, this is okay, next Shazam. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're so excited. Yes, we are. Thank you. So this evolution is for you to now be at the center of Ipsy, which I think you should be anyway. I, I've never been at the center of Ipsy. I've always been, we've always been a bigger space or a, or more spatial, let's put it that way, Yeah. in a way to support what's going on. And for us to focus more on our, our world and our intellectual work and how that relates to Ipsby and all the other places we're relating, that's our organic evolution. And I think for Ipsby to get the kind of infusion of energy so one thing about all those eras of Ipsby, it always required new resource to have a different kind of ideation and realization. We did that when we took over. And I think you guys are, you're going to do that now. You're going to bring new energy and consciousness and realization to the journey. That's going to um, not just, it's going to, I think, you know, Ipsby is an oasis in our, cultural landscape, but it's also universal. 
It's not just here. It is through us everywhere we go. So I think you guys are going to make that, um, that happen in a deep way. New space, new energy, new way of being that has your, you have such vital brilliance, brilliance and genetics in this. <laughs> you do. You're like, you got the goods, I think. So, you know, we're what we're envisioning too for Ipsby is as a as a community and as an entity that way is is really focused on and then, you know, and again, I know that we've all talked about this over the years, but the idea of shifting the paradigm of the sacrificial caregiver. We really want to work on focusing on the evolution of how we we, we uh, train people and move through the world and the idea of building in caring first for yourself, pouring into your own cup before you pour into others so that you're resourced because mm -hmm. the last few years have shown that we really, we really in particular need resource. And so our, our goal with our new space, with how we're going to move through the program and what we're doing is to really build in the habit of caring for yourself first and more, most profoundly as the idea of building resource for the entire community. Hmm. That it's not that you should you should be sacrificing your wellness to help help the greater good. That you start first with yourself, and through that you resource others. Hmm. And that's that's I think Cindy and I's, I's journey and mission for this new iteration is to kind of change the paradigm of the idea of the sacrificing for being able to be a caregiver and uh, someone who contributes positively to the world. You shouldn't have to suffer for that. And finding a way to make that work is going to be our is our goal. So, right now, I just want to say I am so happy that we will still be working together. Yeah, we'll continue, yeah. continue to be partnered. I love and supporting that. each other. Still being like sister schools, and I that lights me up because I would not want to lose what you guys do and how you uh, affect the students, all of the students. And I'd like you to have access to more and more and more. Yeah. So I'm excited about our partnership between the two schools. Yes, and I'm I'm excited to see what you all do with yeah. how you're evolving and, and growing. I I'm, I really like watching watching LEI grow during the pandemic was really cool. Mm -hmm. Seeing how you all pivoted and went, okay, so how can we reach broader communities all over the world and bring the medicine we carry? to a world that's really suffering right now mm -hmm. that was very inspiring too for what what for us to watch and we, we want to thank you too for always inspiring us consistently to okay. be some of the best we can be mm -hmm. yes and helping us stay grounded so thank you i think it's a refining moment mm -hmm. on the planet it's i think it's a deep thing to i'm generally an inquiry in my life almost all the time about what's like vital or what's essential or what's important now. Like, what do we have to let go of? What do we have to embrace? And, and I think we're at a really interesting moment right here. And what we are doing with each other is a resonance that's gonna go out through the community and it's gonna create a new kind of garden. Mm -hmm. And we need that garden. And that garden to me is fundamental for everything that I am about in life, and I think for Tracy as well. You in the, the center of holding this is a profound moment that I'm grateful for. And we're here as part of the community to help and bring resource and keep nurturing what's here. And I think when I listened to you too, and when, as we went through, I said the way for Ipsby forward has got to be way more community than where we were. It's just so much more important now. That, yeah. Not that it wasn't before. It was so important all these years. Like, like you said, that, this has been my mission. But now on the planet ever more, where, you know, especially our world is so disenfranchising, we're fragmenting, and, and we have a cohesion of relationships. So I'm... I'm touched by that. No matter where we are, cranial polarity, massage, hands on massage, we are all healing the world one body at a time. 
you know, and that's part of what I feel about the beauty of our work. All of us, we're all doing that. Yeah. And we're training people to extend that out into the world, expand it rather. And into their, all of their individual yeah. communities. When I was much younger, the idea of trying to change the world was such a big and scary thing because it's just so big. And I love that on a, on a like more macro level with each person that we interact with and how we, how we move through our community, we make a positive impact on our world. And every person we touch, we make a positive impact on it. And it's just so powerful. And it's just such a beautiful gift that we've all had a chance to share with each other and continue sharing.